In this video, you will learn how much experience in chess is important. Round number 8 of Chess Olympiad 2024. Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Nitzan Steinberg, I'm Grandmaster from Israel and today we will watch together the match in round number 8 of Chess Olympiad 2024 between Israel against Cuba. So let's start with our Grandmaster, with our hero of this round we have Grandmaster Ilya Smirin with white pieces against Grandmaster Omar Alameda from Cuba. So let's see it e4 d6 d4 knight f6 knight c3 and e5 is going the philidor defense with the black pieces like magnus against dragnev let's see it knight f3 knight bd7 and bishop c4 bishop e7 castle and castle and rook e1 uh, we saw in the dragnev against magnus carlsen the move a4 here uh, I think overall it was a little bit better than rook e1, but let's see. Rook e1 was played by Ilya, c6, a4, because after c6, b5, this is the uh, idea and the plan by black. You know, to play, for example, if I will show you a3, so b5, I don't know, for example, bishop b3, bishop b7 with a6, e takes d4 and c5. This is the uh, plan for black. So, of course, after c6, a4, a prophylactic and good move. h6. And now bishop a2 was played by Ilya. You know, Ilya really likes this diagonal for the bishop and he thought, you know, let's bring the bishop to a2 and our, everything will be good after it. Uh, just a quiet move and slowly improving his position. Rook e8 and now h3. Also nice move to play. He has time. Uh, he's not hurry for everything. Uh, for anything, of course. Yeah, it takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop f8. And now bishop b4, also, I really like this move. You develop just the bishop, right, in a good square. Uh, also, attacking this d6 pawn, it will be weak pawn. Maybe another 5 and attacking this one. So, let's see. He played the move knight e5, and now we played a5. I'm not sure about this a e5 a move by Elias Mirin, because, for example, bishop h2 was much uh, better than one, because f4, the next move will come, and I'm not sure that black, you know, um, well prepared for this one. So, for example, I don't know, a5, if black is playing, just f4, knight g6, I don't know, king h1, just to avoid this diagonal from the, from the queen. And the next move will be very easy, queen f3, rook a d1 and e5. And as you can see, this bishop is controlling everything in this diagonal. And also this bishop is very important for this diagonal. So yeah, a lot of, you know, like signals here, but yeah, it's, it seems very strong for white. So yeah, I think bishop h2 was a very interesting move. And also, as you can see, you're putting these two bishops in the, this diagonal. They're doing just perfect together. So a5 was played by uh, Ilya, of course. Queen a5 is just a blunder because bishop f7 and knight takes and rook takes a5 and we are up a queen. So he played the move bishop d7 and now bishop g3. Um, really nice move, I think, also to bring the f pawn, sorry, uh, to f4. B5 was played, so I, I think overall A5 was a little bit mistake because of this, because B5 will be played afterwards, right? So Bishop D7 was to prepare B5, because if you are playing B5 immediately, I will just take it, and if A takes, just Bishop takes F7, and I'm taking the Rook. So Bishop D7 uh, is pr preparing just B5, so Bishop G3 and now B5, and this is really nice for black overall, A takes and now A takes, and it seems that B5, B4, uh, maybe C5, uh, it will be happen right now. So f4 was played by Ilya is playing for the attack uh, knight g6 and now king h2. Also e5 was a really interesting move to consider because you're attacking the knight on f6 and d takes f takes knight h5 h7 really bad after e6 probably. I'm not sure but it seems really great. Uh, maybe black should have played the move knight d5 here but knight takes c takes and if bishop takes, rook takes a1, queen takes a1, uh, just, I thought maybe bishop h3, but bishop, yeah, not sure, not so sure, bishop e6 maybe. Because now after knight takes, queen takes d5, and this position, not so easy, yeah, you know, because white has one pawn up, but the king is not safe, and the pawn on e5 is a weak pawn, and these pawns 
I'm not sure. And also the bishop is, um, you know, less good than this well uh, knight, right? So king h2 was played by Ilya. Also, logical move because he really wants to bring this king to a safe position. b5 was played, e5 attacking in the center and now b4. As you can see, black is, is pushing and uh, it will not be easy. e takes f6, rook takes c1. Also, b takes c3 was an interesting move to play. I'm not sure why rook takes c1 was uh, necessary for black. Uh, but let's see, rook takes c1, just queen takes, and now just queen takes on c3. So I'm not sure it was a very strong move by, uh, by Omar. c5 was played now, and now the knight is under attack. So what can he do? He played the move queen b3. But better option was to play queen f3. A very nice move. Uh, looking on this diagonal and after c takes d4 we have bishop f7 king takes f7 rook takes a8 and this position is very very strong because you know you're you are just attacking queen takes f6 rook a7 queen is coming here maybe here maybe also here f5 in some ways the bishop will come the king is not safe in the center of the board so queen b3 was played and unfortunately queen f3 was a little bit better but you know as i said queen f3 also rook a2 and uh, you must see thanks Thank you, thank you, thank you here. Bishop takes, I don't know, rook, oh no, rook a8 now. King takes, maybe bishop f2, maybe f5. Nice position also to play. It seems that, you know, these pawns are very weak. And the king is also a little bit in the center. So let's see. Queen b3 was played, and now rook a2, rook a2, c takes d4, take on g7, king takes, and now rook a7. And as you can see, the black pieces are not so good, right? Because you have like a knight and a bishop against rook and one pawn up for white but also the pawns are weak and the king is not feeling safe so yeah it's it's totally initiative for white of course bishop e7 queen d5 was played bishop e6 take bishop f6 and now queen e4 and now queen c8 was played b4 just trying to to promote this pawn d5 queen d3 knight e7 and now bishop f2 bringing the bishop to d4 and you know I started this, this uh, video about the experience and you know, I, I really want to share with you something about Ilya Smirin. Ilya Smirin is a grandmaster from Israel that I think is age of 56, I think overall. Yeah, 56 because we both, uh, you know, born in the same uh, date, uh, 12th in January and the, the, the difference between us is 30 years old. So I know it's 56 and is playing chess so many years about, I don't know, I think more, more than 40 years. And also he's playing the national team so much time. And the experience that he had over, over the years are just something incredible that you must understand it's part of his chess knowledge. Because in this particular game, you know, he knows that the team needs him. He knows and feeling like he needs to bring home this win. And he's doing it just very slowly, very accurate. You know, he has time. He, do, he don't want to hurry. And, and that's it. He's, he's just playing amazing, I think. Just amazing. Knight g6 was played and this was a mistake. Uh, Bishop d4 was played. Also b5 with b6, with b7. And yeah, just promoting a queen. Bishop d4 takes, takes, and now b5. And as you can see, the rook is doing perfect, but these two, b two pieces are doing nothing. Queen takes e2, b6, rook a8, check, check, and checkmate in the next move after king f5, queen e5, checkmate, and if king h5, rook g5, checkmate on the board. Ladies and gentlemen, Ilya Smirin is doing it another time. The experienced grandmaster in the Israeli national is doing just perfect job in this game and leading 1-0 for Israel. Let's go for the second game. We have Maxim Brochten in the first board against Carlos um, Albornoz. Let's see. So e4, c5. There is a knight of variation here. Bishop g5. Uh, you know, very complex uh, variation against the knight of bishop c4, queen b6, bishop b3, e6. You know, so much lines here, but it seems that they are playing very fast and they're familiar with it. So I think overall they both were, you know, uh, very well prepared until this position. Uh, it seems that white is playing very fast. Knight e5, e takes d5, queen takes b4, d takes e4, maxim 
Rochten, of course, also well prepared in this position because it's already 19 moves in the, into the game and Max has 1 hour and 24 minutes against 1 hour and 30 minutes for Carlos. So g5, bishop e5, uh, f takes e4, now bishop g4, bishop d5, just amazing move, you know, just telling, you know what, I don't need this rook, uh, I, I need the bishop here, very strong. So bishop d5, brilliant move by Chascom, bishop takes, rook takes, and now rook b8, queen e3, a3, now queen d7, and yeah, they're playing just uh, fantastically with knight e6, attacking this knight on d4 and claiming that if you want to exchange you will exchange the bishop so bishop takes e6 f takes and queen a6 and now queen e8 queen c4 and uh, draw a grid here as you can see here after rook c8 if queen takes e6 just queen takes knight takes rook c2 and i think overall here maybe black has a better options because this bishop is very strong and the pawns are a little bit weak right so maybe this rook will will be happy here so yeah it's it's really really interesting so but queen b3 was played and you know for carlos uh, with the white pieces a draw is a very good result against maxim rochten let's go for the third game we have ido gorsten with white pieces against the very famous grandmaster luis quasereda quesada yeah with the black pieces let's see c4 c6 9 3 d5 so the semi slav variation here is going for it and queen c2 b6 was played bishop e2 bishop b7 r g1 ito gorsten uh, you know telling you know what i will play for a win i want to put you checkmate on the board but let's see knight a6 was played by uh, luis and it seems that he's a good move because he wants to develop his knight to b4 maybe to c5 and also rook c8 so makes sense g4 e5 g5 knight e7 and now a3 uh, I can understand this move because he wants to uh, to do a prophylactic move against knight before, but it's, it was very interesting for me because you know in this position, uh, 12 moves in this game and Luis has one hour 33 minutes, and it's a little bit uh, you know surprising for me at least because you know this position I'm not, I don't think that he was prepared in this position so it's it's really great to see him playing like he's just moving his uh, um you know uh, hand with full confidence just amazing d4 was played e4 knight d2 and now a5 and f3 was played now by ido i think this overall was maybe uh, the situation of the game uh, knight d takes e4 and uh, this is something that maybe will be interesting uh, for white after bishop e7 bishop d3 and this position looks very bad for black you know c5 will will uh, fight with d5 and white will play long castle h4 h5 f4 g6 h6 you know so many uh, really strong initiative here and i must tell you that all of these pieces are doing them just nothing here so knight d takes e4 was probably the best here as you understand the experience that I'm to talking with you about it, you know, Ido Gorsten is playing the first is international um, with the national Israeli team. And it's very scary, you know, like a new player in the, the national team. And of course, he's very afraid. He's feeling like, you know, he must win or he must uh, play solid. But in this position, knight d takes e4 is, is very complication move, right? You're sacrificing a knight. But of course, as you as you might understand, this is chess. You you need to take risk, uh, not because of the situation of the boards or not because of the um, you know the the national team. You just need to play uh, a good chess. And knight d takes e4. I'm sure 100 percent that he don't thought about this move. And you know I have a feeling that he didn't play it because you know he was not uh, fully confident about. He's playing in, you know, uh, in the chess national team in Israel. So uh, probably against Magnus Carlsen, he also took the pawn on e4. I'm sure 100 percent. But but yeah, this situation in the national team, it's not so easy to take risks. So f3 was played, takes, takes, now c5. And I, I think overall it was, you know, not so easy. So much things to, to talk about in this game. But but, you know, a lot of variations, a lot of uh, uh, combinations and also calculations. So h5 takes on d4, knight takes bishop e5, and now bishop f1 was well, was not a good move uh, because also you can see that uh, Ido hasn't so much time in his clock. 
C takes D5 was a very strong move, but of course very difficult to understand after Bishop takes probably D6 and I don't know, Bishop takes G1, Rook takes and you know, the the black squares are, are weak for, for black. So Bishop F1, yeah, Knight C5, black is, is putting a very good uh, moves also and also the active moves. So yeah, it's, it's totally agree. Uh, um, great, great, I, I agree to go uh, for, you know, like to bad position for white, unfortunately. Now, bishop b2, and now knight takes a4, h takes g6, now h takes bishop g2, just take the bishop, and now rook d8. Yeah, this position is, is totally mess here. Takes, takes, rook takes d4, and yeah, bishop g7, rook d, e, ef1, rook d3, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, Ido Gorsten is losing this game with the white pieces and yeah yeah you know i i'm sure 100 you know will come back in the next game or or you know the last game of this tournament but he can do it he can do it i believe in him so let's see let's see the last game we have tamir navati the magician with the black pieces so until now the position is one and a half against one and a half israel against cuba so okay tamir navati e4 e5 He's going for the Berlin system and it was a very complicated game and you know, very solid one. Black is doing fine and you know, symmetrical variation, a totally draw, right? It's a total draw, but uh, Tamir Nabati uh, has the feeling, you know, like such positions Tamir can win uh, every single player in the world, I can tell you. I saw him winning just the best players in the world in such particular position. C4, B5, and it seems like he's pushing here. Queen E2, B4, uh, F3, Knight D6. And I, I must tell you that Elier Miranda, uh, the Grandmaster from Cuba, did a very good job here uh, just to save this position, but not only to save. After Knight G1, it's not so easy for black to play because H4, Knight g2, king f2, knight f4, coming back, you know, like to play knight e3. And now he's going, you know, Tamir Navati has the, the feeling that maybe he must win. Because the solution, the, the result, of course, in this particular position was a one and a half against one and a half. And Tamir Navati has the, the confidence maybe to win it and to bring Israeli a very important win. But unfortunately, it was not an easy one. And now he, he needs to, to find some solutions. I think knight h5 was the move here after knight g5 just knight f6 and you know this position should be a draw knight e6 and you know just playing some moves knight g4 knight f2 knight d1 knight c3 or coming back here i don't know something like this yeah it should be should be draw but unfortunately he played the move g4 and after knight f4 it's not so easy c3 king d3 and now the only move uh, to save this position is to play the move knight f5 uh, just not to allow the h6 but he played the move g3 and now h6 Knight e6, knight g2, knight g5, knight f4, and now the only move here is king c6 and he's doing it. Knight f4 was a mistake. The best here for white is to play knight e3 with the plan of king e2, king f1, king g2, and take the pawn on g3. And white is winning because the c2 um, movement is just uh, defended by this knight. So yeah, knight d3 was just a win winning move, but knight d4 was played king c6, knight g2, and now the only move for black now is bringing the king as soon as possible to this pawn. But he played the move knight h7, and now knight e3 is coming back to this variation with king e2, and yeah, this position is just uh, losing one. And unfortunately, Tamir Navati lost his game, and Israel lost the match two and a half against one and a half. The point here after king g6, just king f3, takes, takes, king e3, and the next move will be knight takes before king d3, and taking the pawn, and yeah, white is winning. So, yeah, we lost this match against Cuba. I really, really hope that, you know, the next game, the next match against Moldova will be good uh, for Israel. I can tell you that my parents are from Moldova, so for me it's like derby, but of course I'm, uh, I'm really, really fan of Israeli team. So let's go Israel. If you like this video, just subscribe my channel and like it. See you soon in the next video. Bye, bye.